What is happening guys? Welcome back. So, as you can see by the thumbnail and title, this video is going to be something a little bit different. OG viewers of the channel will know that when we started on the golf project, I went over to the machine shop and had a MIG welding lesson. Now, when I bought this car, I'd never picked a welder up in my life. So I went over for one of Bob's four hour sort of intensive beginner MIG welding courses. Um, and we've been chatting on and off since. Um, and he said, come over, have a TIG welding lesson. Now you've got that motorbike project on the go. So that's exactly what we did. Now, this lesson is obviously four hours long. I was there for about six in total because we were talking. But this is a four hour lesson condensed down into about half an hour. So there's information missing. It might not completely make sense, but you get a good overview of what you get from the lesson. This video isn't sponsored by the machine shop. I just truly believe that what they're doing with the lessons and the whole workshop and pay and play service they're offering is absolutely brilliant. When I was over at the machine shop, me and Bob got chatting and he wanted to give me a code to give to you guys so you can get yourselves 10% off any lessons that you bought with him. Visit the machine shop website and use the code DANDAN1 to get yourselves 10% off any lessons booked. Right, let's get on with this welding lesson. So here we are at the machine shop then. This is Bob. Bob's the man that does all the lessons and generally owns the place. Yeah. So do you want to explain a little bit about what the machine shop is and mm. what people can get at the client? Yeah, uh, machine shop is an open access workshop. Uh, the whole idea of it is that uh, you don't need to buy equipment anymore, you can get a membership, just like a gym. So if you want to go to the gym, lose weight or get big, you don't buy all your own equipment, you go and get a gym membership. Machine shop is the exact same thing, if you want to build a bike or restore a car, you can come here, you can get a membership and use all our machinery. And it's good, there's a lot of kit out there, I've put some little clips in of the bits of kit that are going around in the workshop. and yeah, it's a Great little setup you've got, and a yeah. great idea. The welding lessons as well, which we're going to start on with the TIG in a minute, are absolutely brilliant. So what was the idea behind the welding lessons? Um, well, when I was about 18, 19, I started uh, restoring Land Rover, and all I wanted to do was like learn how to weld. I needed to repair the chassis, as we all know, Land Rover's rot. And uh, I went to the local college, and the, the shortest course was like 11 weeks, and it was hundreds and hundreds of euros. And I didn't want to do that, I just wanted somebody to show me how to turn a welder on, how to do a bit of the job and, and figure the rest out myself. I wanted to learn myself, uh, but that wasn't available. Uh, I ended up becoming a welder and going through all that. And I've, I've done my codes, I've done my courses and it all took lots and lots of time and effort and money. And I've been in the job now about 15 years and, and, and I've cut all the, all the, the uh, unnecessary teaching out yeah. of it and condensed all these lessons down into a four hour, it's kind of like a welding boot camp for people yeah. as, as yeah. you found yeah. out. It, it, it is, I found from the, when we did the MIG one, it's exactly what I wanted. Like you say, you just, you don't just sit in a classroom and have someone telling you this, that and the other. You just want to be sat there and say, right, this is how you turn it on, this is what you do, have a go. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And it, it really does work. Yeah. And you can... We cut literally all the theory out of it uh, because no welder has ever become good from reading a book. So you're in and we're welding within five minutes. Yeah, great. Great little, le great lessons, great place. Have a look at the website. If you've not already, go and get yourself booked in for a welding lesson. Because I know it's one of the things you always wanted to learn. So now is the time. Right, should we uh, make a start on this lesson? Yeah, cool. Let's go. Cool. So because you're a beginner, we're going to start off on this real basic flat plate steel. Yeah. It's two and a half mil, so there's loads of forgiveness in it. <laughs> yeah, you won't be able to burn through. Welder set up, ready to go. And uh, what we're going to do is going to concentrate on just that, that motion, the muscle memory of, of Build the pull, putting the rod in at the right time, and then moving the right distance on to move on. So yeah. I'll start, you put your gear on, I'll start, you watch what I'm doing, I'll explain it all to you, and then we'll move on to you doing it. Sweet, sound good? Yep. Um, so obviously the most important thing is PPE, and I wear it all of the time. <laughs> uh, so you want to protect all exposed skin. And then there are the gloves. Now these are MIG welding gloves, we're going to start with these because they give you a bit more protection from the heat. Okay. Uh, then we've got our welder mask, obviously the most important thing because seeing is very important. <laughs> um, so when you're welding, this is going to be super bright. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're looking at it or looking away from it, it's, it's still damage your eyes. Right. So you get a thing called arc eye. Um, arc eye is when you get like sunburn. No, when you get sunburn and your back gets all yeah. flaky, that happens to your eyes. And you wake in the middle of the night like somebody's put oh. right near sand in your eyes. It's uncomfortable. It's only ever happened once. I'm quite careful with it. Yeah. So, uh, we've got a foot pedal down here. As soon as your foot is near it, the mask is down. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as you know, we've got an active mask, and that will uh, that will engage when you're well. So, we get gloves on. And 
to start, we won't be doing any welding, we're just going to get used to turning the machine on and off. Yeah. So this is our teak torch, we'll put our elbow under the wire, and we hold it like a pencil. Right. Yeah. Get your hand planted, nice and comfortable down. Yeah. At the very top there's a thing called a tungsten. Yeah. So the tungsten carries the, the electric up the up the rod, uh, up the line. Yeah. And then the electric jumps from the tungsten to the workpiece. Yeah. And that's the area of most resistance. That's what, what creates the heat. Yeah. So we're just gonna get used to starting up the arc and, and start welding. Yeah. Yeah. So passed that. Ready? Yep. Can you see that pull? Yeah. So what we're looking for is that little liquid pull that forms at the top of the tungsten. Yeah. We'll just turn the welder up a little bit so the uh, pull is a bit bigger. Ready? Yep. Yeah. See how I can move it around? I yeah, can scare yeah. it. Drag it around with me. Now I'll, I'll grab a rod and yep. we'll do a weld and I'll, I'll talk you through that and we'll go on to uh, you doing some welding. So once we have the pool established, yeah. it's about 6 mil wide. See the way it stops growing? Yeah. That's when you can put the rod in. Right, okay. So rod right into the pool. And then you move the tungsten from the middle of the pool to the edge of the pool. Yeah. And you start again. Right, okay. So we break it down into three steps. One step is make the pool. Yeah. Second step is put the rod into the pool. Third step is move on. Right, okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right, okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's that simple. Now, your turn, I expect it to be as good as me. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense now. So yeah, you're creating the pole so you've got the mold of metal. Mm -hmm. You're putting the rod in to fuse the metal, if you like. Yep. You're moving on to start again. Yeah, right. so this is a welder, and that's filler rod. Yeah, yeah. So you weld the two pieces together with the welder, and then you fill the gap with Put the it rod. back in, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, right, so grab the torch, so elbow under the wire. Under the wire, yeah. holding it like a pencil. Yeah. Now, just do a dry run at the moment, how, your foot off the pedal. How far? You want roughly about the width of the welding wire away from the work piece. Right, yeah. okay. I'll see you later, dude. <laughs> roughly about the width so, of the welding wire, yeah. So, like, kind of like a feeler gauge when you're doing tappets. About that. Yeah. So, if you're any closer than that, the rod will get stuck in between the two. Right, okay, so that's not a few. That's bad, yeah, we don't want that. Right, okay. Yeah. So, for now, don't worry about the wire, just get used to turning the machine on and off. So, mask down, turn the machine on, just get used to starting up that arc. Ah, so we've got to take twice. <sighs> Same, instant mistake. It'll be a long mess. It is. Right, so it's okay. So, it's better to keep it further away than too close. Stop growing now. Yeah. So just get used to moving that towards you. So you're welding in the direction the gas is blowing. So you see, that pink thing is called your ceramic. That's yeah. blowing gas in a certain direction. So it's kind of blowing gas towards you at the moment. So you follow that. That makes sense. Yeah. And you take the centre of the arc to the edge of the hole. Yes. So go again, and you can introduce the rod this time. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get her good and wet now before you put the rod in.
Jesus, that much. Come on, go again. Too much. What, what's that then? Is that too much rod going too in? Too much rod. So imagine those uh, three steps are on sliders. Uh, yeah. Those sliders are just the time. So if you spend more time on step one, it increases the width. Yeah. You spend more time on step two, it increases the height because you put more rod yeah, in. Yeah, right. You get more build. And you increase the time you spend on step three, each weld will come further apart. So if you think of the weld I've done there, yeah. yeah, that's not one weld, that's six little Individual welds. Individual welds, yeah. yeah. So the time you spend on three makes them further apart in the distance. Yeah? So think of it that way. This is a very tall weld, yeah. so you can spend less time on step two and more time on step three, so they're a bit further right, apart. So just yeah, so we, we've got, I've done a weld here, yeah. you've done a weld there, and you've probably got about maybe 15 in there, and i got five. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So. Very good, very good. So yeah, yeah. so that was just, that, again, that's what I did with, he did with Nick, just mm -hmm. rushing. Yeah. Okay. Too much caffeine. <laughs> Good. So see how it gets wider as you move on? Yeah. That's heat building in the material. Right, okay. So you're looking at, I think it's like 1600 degrees at the hottest point. Right. But if you're welding, that, that piece of material is heating up all the time. So as you start welding at one end, by the time you get to the other end of the material, it's already preheated. So yeah. it could be at 20% right, right, heat yeah. already. So it'll grow 20% bigger. Right, okay. So keep doing that until after you're bored. <laughs> Right. It's all torch time. Nobody ever became a good welder from reading a book. That's exactly why I'm here. I've gone back to my old ways now, that one. Alright, you got that, you got that. Sound. So do two or three more, then watch me do it again. I like when you watch. You can see like, I take care of my nails, so <laughs> I push back my cuticles, a little bit dirty because I've been working all day. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so this is what happens when, when uh, you know, the tungsten. That so, welding. Yeah, when Dan has a go at welding. Uh, the tungsten gets contaminated and the top of this is actually broken off, so I'm going to step away for a moment and sharpen it and show you what it should look like. So this is it sharpened, cleaned all the way back. So we leave the tungsten sticking out between four and six millimeters. Um, ignore all the foil tape. We put it on there for another reason a few days ago. I should really take that off. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the next bit. So this is mild steel. Uh, what we're looking at there is the mill scale on top of the steel. Uh, the steel is actually a silvery colour on the inside, so if we take that off, it will weld just the same as stainless steel, which is stainless steel is very, very nice to weld. Right. So what we're going to do is, here's some I prepared earlier. Um, I've ground the edge off that. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to use some stainless steel wire on the mild steel. Right, right. And it'll just calm everything down and it'll just be real silky smooth to weld. But you'll notice the difference straight away. So what we're going to do is we're going to do edge to edge. Yeah. This. Right. Okay. So we're not going to overlap the two pieces. Yeah. Because that will create a weak weld. Because you'll just put a weld from the edge of one onto yeah. the flat of another one, and then all this area will be unwelded. Right. Okay. Um, so what right, we're going to yeah, do is yeah. we're going to go edge to edge instead and fill that gap in the middle. Okay. Let's see if you can see this. Look at this. Hey. Okay. So what we're going to do is go from edge to edge that way. Not this way, or that way, we're going to go edge to edge like that. 
sound. All right, you and the welder. I'm gonna get my mask on. Okay, so we're gonna swap your tongues then because you've. Uh, no, no, again. Oh, I nearly said the F word. <laughs> um, so you damaged top. So um, in real world application, you can weld mild steel with uh, stainless steel rods, but there's no point because that's gonna rust. Uh, yeah. Uh, you could weld uh, stainless steel with a mild steel rod, but what's the point? You because then your weld yeah. will rust. Um, there is lots of welding geeks out there that will say, oh, okay, it's incompatible and stress and all that stuff. But it, from real world applications, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's similar, similar strengths. If you ever come across a, a dirty piece of metal that has heavy mill scale on it, or lots of dirt or rubbish on it, uh, use a stainless steel rod. It tends to calm everything down right. for some reason. So you, you, you get it spitting and popping and that sort of stuff. Use a stainless steel rod. It's a little bit of a trick. We'll, we'll calm it down right. a little bit. Yeah. So uh, do you want me to start and I'll show you what we're yeah. going to do? Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing. So to go through a few technique tips, uh, ABCs of welding always be comfortable. A, B, C. So I'm supporting my hand there. Yep. The closer I can get the support to the workpiece, the better. Because when you're going into, into the bank to like withdraw all your money to go buy a drink of drugs with, yeah. uh, you hold the pen there. Yeah. Yeah. The closer you can get these fingers to the top of the nib, the better your, your signature. Yeah. yeah. So it's exactly the same with the welding. So I always get my, my glove on, and I'm pretty much, if I'm welding aluminium, I'll hold it like that. Yeah. yeah. As close as I can, because it's dead, it's dead steady. You can't get any more steady. Then I, while I'm teaching, we go like that. So sometimes I ball up a glove and I hold it with my little fingers like that. Yeah. So you can press your hand on that. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. yeah. My hand is put no effort into this whatsoever. And all I do is twist my, my wrist and the clockwise. To bring it across. Yeah? Yeah. So I can let go of that torch and nothing happens. It's just fall off or it's just rest in there nice and nice and handy. So now we get down comfortable. And instead of getting comfortable at the start of the weld, I know my weld is going to be about 50 mil long, so I'm going to move to here. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to reach back. Because then, yeah, you get comfortable to the middle point. Yeah. And then. And what I do is I start to let my hand relax and fall back into its natural spot, and then we'll go another 10 mil after that. If you start here, you start to reach. You try to reach. Yeah. And realistically, that weld is going to take a few minutes to do, or sorry, a few seconds to do. So by the time you get there, your hand is fatigued, it's shaking, it's kind of, it's, it's uncomfortable. So, yeah comfortable closer to the end of the way. Reach back and start rolling. So I allow the two pieces to join together first. Yeah. Got it. So let's see how smooth it seems yeah. in comparison. Yeah. So what we'll do is I want you to copy that. Yeah, nice big spaces, uh, real smooth, and then what we'll do is we'll start refining that, we'll get a smaller, we'll use a smaller rod, we'll get the tungsten a bit closer, and we'll start to get those right. Nice nice okay. time doing that, yeah. Sweet. Pennies. Pennies. Pennies! pennies. Stacking those pennies. Stacking them pennies. Okay, let's review your welding. So, how long are you at this now? Three hours? Yeah. So, this is what he's done after three hours. Uh, it's really good. Uh, consistency. So, you can see here. Is that in focus? So, you can see here. It's all getting really good. It's nice. What we're looking for is a flat up that edge, a nice radius around, flat down that side as well. It's really good, then. Really good. So, if you take any section out, like that would be really good. That would be really good. <laughs> that is not sufficient. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. It's consistency. So we're looking for any one piece of that just to be consistent all the way through. This is this is really good done. Really, really good. So this is proof anybody can weld after three hours. We still got an hour to go.
It's the best way of learning. I, I stand by it. It is the best way of learning. Throw it in at the dish tank. That's it. Okay, so for the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to work on the inside edge. Um, we're going to step the amps up a little bit because instead of welding on the outside where we can melt the edges to each other, we're going to be welding on the inside and it tends to disperse its heat into the centre of the workpiece. So we're going to step up the amps about 10 amps and weld down the middle there. We can pull the tungsten out a bit further because so, yeah. the gas gets trapped down in that valley and gives quite a nice weld. Uh, yeah. Sweet. So, a good tip is you pull it all the way up yep. and then you shove it in yeah, and allow three points to touch. So that right, one yeah. point, two point, three point. Right here, yeah. 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 And that'll set it, tighten it down. And then you're going to hover about a millimetre up from each side. Yeah? Right, okay. There you go. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to sit down instead of trying to describe it to you. Right? So what you'll find with this is the arc will tend to drift from one side to the other. Yeah. And when the arc drifts, the pool drifts as well. Yeah. So ignore the tungsten. Okay. It doesn't matter if the tungsten is on that side or that side or at the car park, we don't care. Uh, yeah. We're looking at the pool, we're watching where the pool is all the time. The pool moves over to this side. We have a slight correction, just like when you drive yeah. the car down the road. Okay, you just minor corrections all yeah. the time. Pull is this too? This way too far? Gentle correction, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so really good, apart from See here? Yeah, they've gone over to one side. Yeah, it's gone over to one side, but you're going in too early with the rod. Right. Yeah. And you need to get that pool going, get it nice and wet before you put the rod in. Right, yeah. And I was, I sort of got in a bit of a thing here, and then here, I, I don't know what it is, I try and do, see what. Not that I know what I'm doing there, but I, I'm trying to get it wrong. To, do you know what I'm to work out? I know, I, I, I completely understand what you're saying. That's um, so make mistakes, make, make as many mistakes as you want because unless you do that, you'll never, you know, you'll never yeah. Yeah. So, what I've taught you there is on thick material, but it's transferable to anything. If you're going to thinner material, just let you make it. Turn it down. Turn it down. Just turn it down. Uh, if you feel like it's out of control, you're, 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 you can't keep up with it, like it's pouring in too much mouth, yeah. and you're like, uh, turn it down. If it's not penetrating, um, then turn over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with with TIG, everything's very, very visual. You can see everything that's going on all the time. It's not like me, me, me kind of you know gets away from you and you just yeah. chase it all the time. Slow everything down with TIG. TIG is a crack. TIG is, is, is a real nice process. Yeah. You can see the material knitting together and you've got time. You're like, okay, right, I'm, I'm happy with that. You put the rod in, I'm happy with that. Okay, yeah. right, that one's done now. Let's move on and make another one. There's yeah, something, go again. The city is, is something quite therapeutic about it. Yeah. Compared to me. Compared to me, yeah. Compared Mig, to Mig me. Is, Mig is. Like you say, compared to me, it's, you're just chasing yourself constantly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cool, right. Um, shall we do some two? Yeah. Okay, so tube prep. This is how it comes out of the machine. We've got all this wharf around here at the edge. We don't need that because you can't weld to that get rid of it, grind it off. Then you've got these sharp edges at the top. So if you see the tube that goes into it, like that, at the edge here, you'll have a, a, a sharp point. Uh, this material is two mil thick. As it goes up here, it gets thinner and thinner until it's one mil thick, and then it's literally no mil thick. That is not strong. So what we do instead, is we grind the tops away, here and here. You look at the end, it's now 2 mil thick all the way around. When you put it together, that's where your weld will go. Inside, can you see that? There you go. Inside there. And that's what makes a weld strong. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So you have to grind away that thin edge and get some meat, meaty material there. Both sides. A bit acetone and some scotch. 
and clean it down. It's not hugely important, but it does help. So that piece on top of there. And a nice exact fit as best as possible. Um, and so we want to tack there and there. Perhaps, yeah. Enough. Brilliant. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That both sides? Yeah, both sides. Okay, so I'm going to turn the amps down. We're drawing good amp, big boy amps. I'm guessing that. Yeah. Yeah. So you tell me whether it's right or wrong. Okay. okay. You'll, you'll know instantly if there's not enough power. So I want you to start in that corner there. Okay. And weld up. Right. Yeah. Then turn it around, start in that corner and weld up. Okay. So we've got two issues here, uh, this uh, concave area here and this concave area here, that's called undercut, it's caused by one of two things, too much heat or not enough wire, or a combination of the two. That can cause a stress razor and might crack in that area. So do it again and do it right. So from there, oh, yeah. so I'm going to drop your amps by five. Right, okay. Go for it. Brilliant, okay. So I've turned the amps down and I've asked Dan to add more rods so notice that we don't have any undercut anymore. Much better. Much better. Could go a little bit slower though. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So there is the lesson or my time on the welder done and we can see the evolution of welds. So you can see where we started over here. Um, obviously, lack of experience. Uh, here we're moving a bit too fast, not penetrating through the material enough. You notice the way it, it, it's heaped up on top, not gone into the material. Then here, we're going too slow, obviously going through the material. But as time goes on, we, uh, we I think we're around this way. We start again with these pieces here. And then the consistency starts to come in. You, you you slow down, as I said to you all the way through the through the lesson. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Let the weld sink into material properly, and then a strong weld will naturally start to look good. So you can see this one looks like that one, and they all start to to start to look like each other. Really good, really good work there. Good bit of penetration. Great way of learning. And then we moved on to. So I'm outside edge then, so we take the exact same weld that we've been doing and we transfer it onto an outside edge. So you can see that he's keep, keeping the same pattern here, which is, is all really good. So some of them are a little bit bunched up on top of each other here. A little bit more space on, on, on the third step. Uh, but yeah, consistency is coming all the time and, and you're getting good control there. Then we went on to inside edge. Obviously struggling at the start here. Uh, inside edge is a little bit trickier, but we just turn the amps up and, and, and uh, slow down. So these gaps here are just you not you not allowing the two pieces of metal to melt together yeah. first. And then as time goes on, uh, you can see the, the, the good progress there. And this is what you end up doing. But yeah, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So, if I can learn how to do that in four hours, Anyone can. Get yourself on the website, get yourself a lesson box, come down and see Bob, and learn that little thing you've always wanted to learn. So it's not just welding lessons that you do, you do a lot of other lessons as well, what other similar um, things that you do? The majority of the stuff that we do is welding lessons, so we do MIG, TIG, and we do uh, aluminium welding, which is uh, my specialty is all aluminium welding. Uh, we do titanium, stainless steel. Uh, we also teach uh, motorcycle maintenance. We teach uh, milling, lathes, mills. Uh, machining, uh, sandblasting, powder coating, anything that you want to learn. If we don't know how to do it, we'll, we'll find out and teach you properly. So it's a one-stop shop, so yeah, definitely check them out. And if you're close by, drop down, see what it's all about, and get yourself signed up. So, there we go. That is my little welding lesson over at the machine shop, over and done with. I'm gonna go home, and then we'll get back in the workshop in the morning and get carried on. So, thank you to Bob for giving me the lesson. Until next time, enjoy.